Hello and welcome to Allegheny County Libraries. Let's get lit. Well, this is where we talk about exciting titles so you, our patrons, can know what to read next. We will be talking about hot new titles to the library and also still burning titles, which may be older but are ones we have loved. Let's Get Lit is available in video format on the ACLS YouTube as well as in podcast format on Apple, Google, and Spotify, so you can subscribe for updates when we release new episodes. Let's Get Lit will be bi-monthly and we would love your feedback as we do this. Contact information will be in the description as well as at the end of the episode. Any titles mentioned will have links to our catalog in the description as well. Now, let's get lit. Hey, I'm Allie. I'm Shane. I'm Liz. And welcome back to Let's Get Lit. It has been a while, so thank you for your patience as we prepped for Summer with Your Library. Make sure you check into a library to learn all about it um, in prepping for the new LaVale building to open. So um, thank you for being patient. But we are back, and we are ready to talk about summer reads. So I think we're just going to talk about books we've enjoyed lately, books coming out that should be on your radar for the summer. So um, let's hop into it. Anyone want to start? I can start. All right. I was, Liz always has the best summer recommendations. I just I just started reading In Love by Amy Bloom. It's a memoir of love and loss. It's a powerful memoir of love that leads two people to find a courageous way to part and a woman's struggle to go forward in the face of loss that enriches the reader's life with energy and gratitude. It's great. I just started it. And she's a, I haven't read very many of her things, but this is starting to be like, it's excellent. It's just, it's a love. It's like a love letter mm -hmm. to her husband mm -hmm. who had Alzheimer's and it's a decision they made to end his life. So Oh, ah, coming, coming in, coming in really on a high note there, Liz. Um, well, since you talked about something that you started reading, I read um, Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Oh, was it good? And it was, it's so good. I love romance in the summer times. It's just like, you don't really have to concentrate very hard on it, but it's still good. There's a lot of different layers to it and stuff. But Emily Henry does a fantastic job of like knowing the tropes of the genre playing into them but also humanizing mm -hmm. them in a way that's not like over the top and like actually kind of makes fun of the writing in and of itself and so that makes it fun and anyone who's a big reader would get like the literary references and whatnot but um this one is fun because it's about a um an agent and an editor and she goes to this editor to pitch her client's new book and he's like no, that's silly. Like, that's silly because it takes place in a small town. It's like a Hallmark movie. And he's like, no, that's never going to do anything. So it's like a year or two later, and it's become a huge success. And her and her sister go to this small town to vacation. And they come up with a list, like the Hallmark list, like save a small town store and uh, fall in love with a local. And she's in one of the stores, and the editor is there in uh, the last place. And she's like, is he a big fan of the book? Like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. But, of course, in a small town, you just keep running into each other. So um, it was really great. Emily Henry is just something about her writing. And even people who don't enjoy romance seem to enjoy her books. Well, so. that's been going out a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. like, people have holds on it constantly. Mm -hmm. It's like a constant holds list. I don't think there's been a single book of hers that I've been disappointed in. Does she usually put out books in the summer? Yes. It's because um, her first one was actually Beach Read. Mm. And okay. then... Um, I'll recommend that at the next episode. But Beach Read, and then she had um, People We Meet on Vacation. And okay, this right. one, uh, Book Lovers, and they come out around May each year, right before summertime. Um, I want to talk about a new book uh, called Howls from the Dark Ages, which is an anthology book um, about short stories um, that uncover the secret annals of untold history in these 18 medieval manuscripts. There's uh, ancient horrors uh, and cursed castles, wild woodlands, haunted hamlets, and mysterious monasteries. Mm -hmm. um, these, this is from a lineup of authors like more familiar, and then ones that are just coming out. Um, it has uh, it's been curated by and has a foreword by one of my favorite authors, uh, Christopher Buhlman, um, who did um, the Black Tongue Thief, 
Um, but this is, I love anthology because um, I like things that are loosely connected around the theme and seeing where people go with those. And this is really, really uh, effective at um, offering something unique in each short story. Um, it just came out and the, um, the system has it. It's uh, really worth your time. It's, the short stories are easy to get through and they all they offer something completely unique. So it's a horror Yes. Kind of based. Yes. I love short story collections, especially in the summer, because when you get busy, you don't have time to read a full right. novel. It's nice to sit down and you can just read one story, feel accomplished about things. Yes. Yes. And like, yeah, you can, it's kind of read at your own pace. You're mm -hmm. not, you don't have to sit there and continue reading it. Yeah. I have a hard time remembering characters mm -hmm. and plot points uh, during the summer, especially when there's so much going on and you don't get enough time to read. This lets you knock something out without having to, you know, keep in mind all these different plot threads and everything throughout the entire novel. Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. And it's kind of a different storyline, but it just came out, so people are checking it out already. And is, that, is that about the octopus? The octopus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's a beautiful examination of how loneliness can be transformed cracked open with the slightest touch from another living thing. So I can't wait to start it. It is, I actually just borrowed it from Libby. That one's on my list. Mm -hmm. um, I, that is weirdly not the first story I've heard about um, connecting with an octopus. I'm like, oh really? Finding out more about life from an octopus. That's so, unusual. Yeah, I, I guess because they're such intelligent creatures. Um, and they're very loyal creatures to mm -hmm. their their families. Now, everything else that I have is books that are on my list to read for the summer. Um, Hidden Pictures is, I believe, hitting shelves if it hasn't already. Um, and this is about a nanny who is watching a young boy and she's really connecting with him. And he starts drawing these really disturbing pictures of a woman, a man dragging a woman's dead body. And he keeps drawing these like pictures of this murder. And she's like, I think he witnessed a murder in the woods. So she goes to investigate. And I do think it has like some supernatural elements to it, um, where it has kind of this evil has like manifested from this unsolved murder. Um, so I think that one sounds really good. I think that would be really great for fans of Stephen King. Um, sounds a little bit of that. Probably a little darker of the mystery thriller genre. Shutter is another um, book that's coming to the libraries. I haven't seen it yet, I don't believe, but it was um, a horror. I can't remember. It's um, Native American. Mm -hmm. The author is Native American. and mm -hmm. So I think it's set on a reservation. I'm excited about a movie that's coming out this summer called Watcher. Um, it's, it stars uh, Micah Monroe, the screen queen uh, from It Follows and The Guest, if you've seen those. Um, she's great. It's about a young woman who uh, moves with her husband to Bucharest and begins to suspect a stranger who watches her from the apartment building across the street, maybe a local serial killer decapitating women. Oh. So right there you get uh, Rear Window from Hitchcock. Um, I think it's kind of a, a twist on that, or like a Brian De Palma type situation, um, with like maybe Body Double. Um, this is directed by Chloe Okuno, who uh, directed one of my favorite segments and a recent awesome anthology horror movie called VHS 94. She did the sewer segment, which is about a, um, a rat king that lives in the sewer and uh, people who um, foolheartedly take a trip to the sewer and visit uh, the rat king. Um, this movie has been getting a lot of great reviews. It was uh, something that I've been looking forward to for about a year now because the um, type of projects that Mike Cohen Road chooses to do are always interesting and they're deeper than just surface level horror. You, you don't see her doing, you know, remakes of stuff or ca cashing in on whatever happens to be on her plate. She does interesting projects. And um, I really love. Alfred Hitchcock spins. I love when people take the premise of something that's familiar, like a Hitchcock movie uh, premise that you've seen before, and make it uh, more disturbing or make you make, turn the premise on its head. And it sounds like this is what that is. Um, it's streaming on the service uh, Shutter right now. I'm really looking forward to it. It's weird. 
Shudder. Mm -hmm. Shudder. Yeah. And I was going to say that sounds similar premise, but the book, this book probably isn't going to be as gory. <laughs> Um, the House Across the Lake by Riley Sager is coming out, and yep. it's about a snoopy neighbor who's spying on the not-so-perfect couple next door and um, ends up becoming obsessed with finding out what happened when the wife goes missing. So, Yeah, this, I, I did look at that. Um, the last time I read one of his books, I was really disappointed in it, but that sounds like a good premise that <laughs> wrote me in. This Riley Sager is going to be my um, make-or-break Riley Sager. Yeah. <laughs> You've had enough chances. <laughs> yes, I'm like... Had some really highs, some yes. really lows, and now I'm just like, give me another good one. I want to see someone tackle that genre, though, like the um, the girl across the street, from, you know, in the window, across the way up. That yeah. long title of that Kristen Bell movie. Speaking of movies, I just want to put um, Belfast out there. Mm -hmm. It's done in black and white. It just came out, I think, last month, and we have it. It's really good. I mean, if you have any interest in the IRA... Um, and I, when I was growing up, that was something that was in the newspaper all the time. And um, I know I'm going to put another plug in for Say Nothing, which is about the IRA. And it's a nonfiction book. But it was a great movie. Great actors, too. Okay, so I'm reading the book. Let me see. I've got all kinds of books, like on Libby. And, mm -hmm. Well, I did read The Magnificent Lives of Marjorie Post. And Mary Weather Post Pavilion, that family oh, post serials. Interesting. And her life was interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, she came. Well, you have to be if you have a pavilion named after you. Right. It's, <laughs> well, her father was very ill, and they went out out west. I can't remember. Maybe it was Battle Creek, where ever. So I'm going to say Battle Creek. And he was um, seen by Doctor Kellogg. Kellogg serials. Hmm. And so there was that connection with them, and they kind of broke off. I think they were working together for a while, Kellogg and um, Post, and then they, they broke off. And uh, so it goes from where she inherit, you know, she helps her father with the company when she's very young. She's an only child, and they don't come from a lot. So mm -hmm. this is, you know, just another try at something her father had to um, make money and um, she she just remakes herself she's a society bride she's a savvy entrepreneur a visionary a philanthropist a presidential hostess and much more and the author uh, brings this towering legend to life and it was really very fascinating I mean there was a special on um, I believe it's a history channel about um, Kellogg and Post. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it, my husband did, so he kind of gave me some so bad. You guys thoughts. could fill in the blanks. Yes. The yes, it was good. It's a very good book. The Dressmakers of Auschwitz. And it's a true story of women who sur uh, sewed to survive. And it's by Lucy Al Allington. And it's a powerful chronicle of women who use their sewing and skills to survive. And what was really interesting was the bond that these women had mm -hmm. and how they would help each other and how, especially the woman, Marta, who was the head of this sewing group, um, she was like the capo. And that's what they call them if they were a leader of something in um, Auschwitz. So how they not only helped each other, but we're doing um, resistance, Marta was, and how there were people definitely in Auschwitz that weren't all evil, that would help her out um, to get information in and out and things in and out of uh, the camp. So it was a very good, I'm still reading it, but it's very good. Back to the horror, um, Paul Tremblay, for any big horror fans will know, Paul Bears Club is coming out. Um, it's about Art, who gets a new friend who has a weird hobby of volunteering as a pallbearer and taking pictures of the corpses. Uh, hmm. Weird things happen around, uh, around his friend, and years later he's writing a memoir about it, just trying to wrap his head around all the things that happened. She finds out about it, wants to see the manuscript, and is kind of gaslighting him into 
cutting out some of the things and convincing him that these things didn't happen. So it starts to blend his memories with fiction, and it is a psychological thriller. Um, but Paul Tremblay is a pretty big author in the horror community, so I'm interested to see how that one is. Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. This is about uh, Vera who moves back home and it is the home where her serial killer father lived and buried his victims. Um, so she has to kind of face that. But a new artist has moved into the guest house and swear he isn't the one leaving notes around the home in her father's handwriting. So if it's not him, who would it be? Um, she has to face the secrets of the house and everything that has happened there. So... Looking forward to um, What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Mm, uh, yes, 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 that's on my list too. Yeah. Um, I need that list. Oh my pages. gosh. Yep. Uh, T. I Kingfisher, heart. I read her. Nettles, Nettle and Bones. No, um, what was it? What was that last year? Um, it has a tree on the cover. I can't well, think of it. Anyway, I read it last year and it was like nothing I have ever read before. Yeah. Um, I'm reading the Nell and Bone right now, and I love it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's short, <laughs> so that's cool. But uh, this this is coming out in July. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, another thing I'm looking forward to reading is the just released uh, Nicholas Cage biography, uh, Age of Cage by Keith Phipps. Age of Cage. <laughs> yeah, Nicholas Cage is one of my favorite actors, and I think he's severely underappreciated. I'm surprised oh, you're admitting that to the him. masses. I love him when he's doing great work, and he does great work when he can. He had a lot of debt to pay off, so people know him for a lot of bad movies that he's been forced to. to uh, Okay. To, to start, him. his accountant screwed him, more or less. Oh. But when he's at his best, like Wild at Heart, or um, I want to say Face Off, uh, or, you know, Moonstruck. Moonstruck uh, My favorite. And he is so versatile and so uh, committed to his crafts that um, I think he, he just, he's unlike any a actor, especially of his generation. But Keith Phipps is one of my favorite um, film critics, and he's um, a great podcast host as well. He um, is very interested in peeling back the layers of the public persona of this man who has, you know, he didn't always have the reputation as the wild, crazy guy that he is now. Mm -hmm. He's kind of like people interpret him uh, kind of having a, a character that he plays in every movie that um, mm -hmm. is very very hard to distance himself from, but he has a lot of range. And I think that this, um, this book really gets into that. Also the black phone is a, mo a movie I'm lo looking forward to seeing. Uh, it's been heavily delayed. It's supposed to come out over a year ago. Um, it's from the director of Sinister and oh. it stars, uh, Ethan Hawke as a child abductor. And I don't know much about the plot by choice because I don't like going into horror yeah. knowing, you know, you know, the fine details. But the the hype around this movie is un insane because it's been delayed and it's been it's been screened at festivals. So as only the select few have seen it, and they've all talked about how great it is. Well, Sinister is probably hands down one of the most terrifying movies. It I've is. Ever yes. Yes. Like I'm not big a horror person, but. Yeah. I was forced to watch that, and it is one of the scariest movies I think I have ever seen. Home video footage done, yes. like, the best way. Also, um, I saw Shane and I had a lot of overlap in titles, so I stole Okay. Stole your titles there. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Hildebrand. I was going to say, I have some down here. Hotel Nantucket. Nantucket. Oh, yeah. Um, also, Jill Shalvis has Friendship Pack coming out. Um, Susan Mallory has Boardwalk Bookshop. Yeah. So I figure those are kind of similar vein. You have to do a couple beach reads. You just have mm -hmm. to. Yeah. What is summer without this? We I, have a display for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I do have just a few more uh, that are kind of on the list. The Last to Vanish by Megan Miranda. She's another summer thriller author to look forward to every summer. She always comes out with a really good one. Um, this one's about... A town with a string of disappearance. Uh, Lisa Jackson has a girl who survived coming out. Um, Ellie Griffiths, I remember she became really popular. And she has a new one called The Locked Room coming out. And then, of course, Ruth Ware has The It Girl coming out. And that's about a group of friends. Um, they're kind of rocked when one of them is murdered. 
the supposed killer dies in prison and then a reporter shows up years later and he's like, I think the guy was innocent. And um, as they dig into it, they realize that their group of, friend has, group of friends has a lot to hide, including a murder. So that's, I love friend group murders. They are one of my favorite things. I just I wish one of my friends would commit a murder. <laughs> <laughs> I just love trying to figure out who did what and who is sneaking around <laughs> and who is connected to who. The things coming out this summer to look forward to, to read, to watch. Um, Lots of mystery thrillers, um, lots of beach reads. So, um, as always, check out your branch, see what they got. Tons of displays, tons of staff picks. So, um, we'll keep recommending things and feel free to pick one up. So, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us for Let's Get Lit. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. If you have any questions, suggestions, or want recommendations, please contact us either in the comments section, by giving us a call, or by emailing us at letsgetlit at allegheny